chapter 1, King James Version. I have all, about all the versions there is, uh, more or less, and I read uh, for my own information and education and curiosity what these other versions and perversions have to say. <laughs> Amen. But they ain't nothing like the King James. I have the New King James, but I don't like the New King James as well as the King James. Amen. I, I hate to see them take a Bible and make a poem out of it. And that's what they took Psalms, most of Psalms and some of the uh, prophets, and, and they make a poem out of it of sorts. Uh, and they put it down in poetry fashion. I hate to see that because that does away with the, the prophecy. Amen. And a wonderful thing about the King James, you have the prophecy, and then you have the fulfillment of the prophecy. You run across the prophecy in the Old Testament of some of these versions and paraphrasals, and I have them too, and I get a little help once in a while out of some preacher's paraphrasal. Amen. And uh, I like to read them for that reason, because I like to read sermons. I like to read all kinds of preachings. Amen. Some I learn how to preach, and some I learn how not to preach. Amen. Uh, but a lot of these paraphrasals, uh, uh, you, you wouldn't know a prophecy if you run across it, because it bears no resemblance to the fulfillment in the New Testament. Amen. And uh, so that's why I, I always come back to the good old poetic Shakespearean King James Version. Amen. It's like a treasure house of the English language. I mean, you can't beat it. Uh, amen. There are some things that are obsolete, I'll admit. Words that are obsolete, but that just gives you something to dig for and find the meaning of those words. Amen. Their original meaning. Amen. Oh, yes. And so... Uh, I'm reading in Luke chapter 1, verse 59, It came to pass that on the eighth day uh, they came to circumcise a child on about John the Baptist. And they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Yeah. And his mother answered and said, Not so. No. Amen. Not so. But he shall be called John. And they said to her, There's none of thy kindred that is called by this name. I mean, on her protest, since old Zacharias couldn't talk for himself, they was going to name him Zacharias Jr. Or Zacharias II. Amen. And uh, his mother answers, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said to her, There's none of thy kindred called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, Say, his name is John. Amen. And they marveled all. Oh, boy, I mean, you notice the, the uh, positivity in his, in his writing? He didn't say he, 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 knew he ought to be called John. He said his name's already John. The angel has already named him. His name is John. Amen. No doubt. No, perhaps, used to say in Arkansas, no, hat, no perhaps, nor probably. <laughs> Amen. And he asked for writing table and wrote, saying his name is John, and they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. Woo, hallelujah, that's a good way to get your tongue loosed, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Louise and Snuffy Smith was, and her neighbor was bawling and a squalling because uh, uh, Zoni May was moving to the flatlands out of the hills and they wasn't going to have anybody to gossip about. Amen. Since Zoni May was moving. Well, amen. <clears throat> 
He opened his mouth and he didn't gossip. He, he praised God. He glorified God. He used to have a song, If I were dying and just one word to say, I'd speak it for Jesus that I'd dream my life away. Amen. Well, he, he finally got his mouth open immediately and his tongue was loosed and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them and all these things were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of the holy prophets, which hath been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant us unto us that being delivered out of the hand of our enemies we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life you think he really got with it when he started prophesying I think he did Amen. And thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest, and thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Zachariah and Elizabeth both were probably in their early 60s. Amen. And uh, uh, they didn't have any children. And God gave them John the Baptist when they were past the years when uh, they should have had children. Amen. It was at a time that it was such a heartbreak and such a reproach not to have children, not to have a family. Amen. Oh, you didn't have to worry about abortion in those days. Amen. The only form of abortion they had was a, uh, if they happened to be a pagan, they would burn some of their babies as an offering, usually the best one as an offering to Moloch. Amen. But that's, that's not too much different than abortion today. Amen. Uh, I, you can't hardly listen to the radio without hearing some new dirt from every direction. Girl down in Kentucky uh, uh, smothered to death her little child of three months old, four months, somewhere like that. Amen. And, and, and smothered it to death. My God. What gets a hold of people in the day we're living in? Amen. You don't have to worry about that in Zacharias day. I mean things is pretty hard in Israel. And they were taxed by the Romans to boot. But bless your heart, children were still the heritage of the Lord. According to the Bible, and happy is the man that hath his quiver full of him. Amen. The only hope in Egypt was uh, that they'd have so many kids that their numbers would finally outnumber the Egyptians and even scared old Pharaoh. Amen. That's why they killed the boys just as soon as he was born. Amen. That's why Moses' mother put him in a basket of bulrushes and turned him loose and that basket 
pitched inside and out with tar, amen, and set Moses afloat in the Nile, praise God, and turned him loose in the hands of God. Sooner or later, folks, we've got to turn him loose. Praise God, sooner or later, we've got to commend them to God. Sooner or later, pastor, you got to turn them loose. Sooner or later, you got to commend them to God. And God's going to have to keep them in the last analysis. Amen. I like to talk about when mercy kissed the earth. What eloquence, what words of faith and hope come from the lips of this man that's been dumb for most of a year. Amen. My God. What a message. What a promise. Praise God. When Zachariah's mouth was open, the Bible said he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. There were many people in the Old Testament filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. They were not baptized as we uh, speak uh, generally, but they were filled with the Holy Ghost to do a certain job. Prophets were filled with the Holy Ghost to prophesy. Kings were filled with the Holy Ghost to minister uh, their particular office. Uh, amen. And many were filled with the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament, but not generally. Amen. And it didn't abide like it does today. It came on them sporadically. Amen. It came on them according to the need. And, and some strange characters, uh, amen, uh, were momentarily filled with the Holy Ghost. Some fellows that we wouldn't have given the time of day, the Holy Ghost came on them. Amen. King Saul, amen, fell out in the spirit while he's chasing David with blood in his eye and prophesied. Amen. That demonstrates that God's got more power than men have. When he wants to, the Holy Ghost can take over. Ooh, the Holy Ghost can throw a roadblock and thing. The Holy Ghost can put a sprag in the cogs. Praise God. He was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. When I was reading it a while ago, you couldn't tell it from preaching, could you? Prophesying and preaching the same thing. Amen, generally speaking. Amen. And boy, he spoke of redemption. Think of it. Uh, praise God. He, he, he said in the 67th verse, uh, that, and, and, and his fathers filled the Holy Ghost uh, and, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God, verse 68 of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Now, folks, that is power. You talk about fanning the flames of hope in Israel. They, hallelujah, were going to be redeemed. What does it mean? It means to buy back one's freedom. That means his inheritance, his freedom has been disposed away. He's either been sold into slavery or indebted into slavery. Amen. And, and, and servitude. And now, hallelujah, they've got a redeemer. And God's going to give it back to them. How many is glad for redemption tonight? You don't have to be a slave no more. You don't have to be a... Uh, in bondage to sin anymore. Hallelujah. You have been redeemed. He spoke of redemption. Praise God. That means to buy their freedom back. Amen. Praise God. And then he spoke of the Messiah from the house of David. I'm talking about a messianic prophecy. There's going to be a king come. Hallelujah. And he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet, which have been since the world began. He's been preaching about it, prophesying about it. Ew! Amen. Redemption. A Messiah. And he narrows it down to David's child. Ha! Hallelujah. 
Amen. Isn't that wonderful? We was in the Holy Land uh, a couple years ago. And while we were in the room on Zion's Hill where David's tomb is, David's coffin is, draped with blue uh, velvet tapestry, those crowns sitting on top of it, they stole those crowns a few years ago, and, and they finally got them back. And uh, they tracked them down and, and got them back, and they're sitting back up on that coffin again. Crowns that David took off the head of kings that he conquered. Amen. And you can still go to David's tomb right there in Jerusalem, right there to his coffin. And, amen. And while we were there looking at it and enjoying our tour, in came a whole schoolhouse full of little boys. All the same size, about Austin's size. They've been come in all dressed in their school uniforms uh, with their teacher with them and everything. Amen. They started laying hands on that coffin and praying and crying. You never saw the beat. Amen. I was awestruck by it. And I said, what are they praying for? Amen. Finally got the word to the guide, the question. And he said, they're praying for the return of David. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. And did you know the Bible prophesies he's coming back? He is coming back. And he's going to sit on the throne right there again. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Not only that, his son Jesus Christ, the son of God, the son of David, he's coming back. He's going to sit on his throne too. At the right hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So he spoke of a Messiah. He spoke of salvation. That we should be saved from our enemies. Who's your enemy tonight? I don't look at your wife or your husband. Who's your enemy tonight? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Who's your enemy? That we should be saved from our enemies and from all that hate us. Amen. Don't look at your boyfriend's last girlfriend. Amen. And we should be saved from our enemies and from all that hate us. Who's our enemies? Fear, sin, death, sickness. Amen. All those are enemies. Poverty. Amen. We're going to be saved from all our enemies. Woo! Salvation going to be complete. Hell! Saved from hell! Saved from judgment to come! Amen! He spoke of salvation. What a message he gave. Amen. Verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mercy. 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 He gets that mercy again down here in the 78th verse. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us. That's what I'm talking about. When mercy kissed the earth. Hallelujah. Yeah, you see that Bible. We read you a verse over here in the Psalms. Psalms 85. Mercy and truth are met together. You, glory to God. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Inference is that mercy and truth kissed too. Amen. Woo! Righteousness and peace kissed each other. Nowadays, you know, we're either to the right or the left. We've either gone to seed on mercy or we've gone to seed on truth. Amen. Seem like we can't never get the two together. But boy, if they ever get married, it'll be a sight. What a revival we'll have. Amen. We're either to the right of, 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 of uh, peace, or, or, or excuse me, to the right of righteousness, or to the left of peace. Amen. We're either a, 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 a legalist or a liberal, one or the other. Amen. But boy, if they ever get together, just right. Amen. And mercy and truth meet together. And righteousness and peace kiss each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven 
through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. Amazing thing about God's visitation of mercy is it's a visitation of mercy. Almost no generation was ever worth it. Amen. Steeped in false doctrine and error. Steeped in, in, in twisted truth. And, and life long, deep, died. Uh, uh, false doctrine. Amen. Mercy kissed the earth in Martin Luther's day. A day of grace and time. It wasn't because Martin Luther was right on everything he believed. It wasn't because Martin Luther didn't make no mistakes. It wasn't because Martin Luther broke plumb clean from everything in the Catholic Church. Amen. It was mercy that brought us one step out of the darkness. Woo! Glory to God. What the Catholics call... The age of light. History calls the dark ages. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. But when Luther came out and found out the just shall live by faith. And not by the dead works of Romanism and paganism. Hallelujah. It's a sight. The freedom men begin to enjoy. Praise God. Yes, we had started out, and history calls that the uh, the uh, uh, had it right on the tip of my tongue. Reform, yeah. uh, reformation is a good word. Enlightenment is a good word. Amen. Oh, glory to God! It's right on the tip of my tongue. Somebody help me out. Give me some more words, huh? Renaissance! <laughs> the awakening! Praise God! Hallelujah! Ah, yes! History calls it the Renaissance! Isn't that what the Bible said? He said that the day spring from on high has visited us. What do you do when it becomes day? Well, most of us wake up. Amen. I mean, the old rooster even wakes up. The cows and the birds wake up. Amen. <clears throat> what did you say, Mark? And you wake up? Amen. Good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, uh, everybody wakes up except those night owls. Amen. Brother Savage said he is a night owl. He'll stay up all night and read and study and call somebody at Two or three o'clock in the morning, clear across the country. Amen. And he's a night owl. Consequently, he sleeps a little later because he stays up all night. Amen. In that office. Hey, but most everybody and most everything wakes up with the dawning. Hey, I can see the dawning of a brand new day. Hold on a little longer, child. And don't forget to pray. I can see the dawning. Sister Sue Cole wrote, Have a brand new day. Hallelujah. Oh, what, what eloquence. Oh, what a message. Deliverance from, from all our enemies. And notice he said that he would grant unto us, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, that we might serve him without fear in holiness might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him how long all what all the what all the days of what our lives can we do it can we do it is it possible was the Holy Ghost mistaken was the Holy Ghost alive you don't know my problems, Brother Con. 
It don't matter. I start to say I don't care about your problem. Amen. I will say I don't care about your problem. Not that I don't care, but I don't care. You know what I mean, don't you? It's not that I'm not concerned. But I don't care about your problems. It's still not too big for God. His enabling grace is sufficient. Can you say amen? You just don't know why you don't know my kids. You don't know my husband. You don't know my wife. I've had folks tell me those very things. Amen. One girl left here backslid, lost out. God said, you don't know my mother. I knew her mother. But I didn't have to live with her. And she did. Amen. Felix Clark got delivered from alcoholism. Right down in front of the altar in the old Midway Church, I was right by him when he got delivered. Brother White took his head in his hands and turned him up. He'd come to the altar a dozen times drunk and left drunk. When he'd come to church, he came drunk. When everybody quit singing, he kept singing. And Felix would have to get his dad in, take him home, because he's disturbing church. Amen. And... Uh, one night, Felix came to the altar again. Hallelujah. Oh, people browbeat each other and say, Why, well, this is your daddy, and they'd get down and pray some more, and everybody was getting unconcerned. Well, that's just old Felix. He's been here a dozen times. Amen. A few people would pray. But one night, amen, we had the right contact. Hallelujah. And the power of God came down and touched Felix Clark's life. And he left sober, testifying the grace of God, and came back to church and testified for months. But I didn't know his wife. I didn't know that she hated holiness and Pentecost so bad that she'd rather him been a drunk staggering down skid row than to go to that church. And she nagged him and dragged him until I'll never forget. I was driving down Highway 63, almost got to the road that turns up to my church, and I saw somebody staggering right down the middle of the white line, Highway 63. It was Felix Clark again. He was drunk, staggering right down the middle of the road. It's a wonder he didn't get run over and killed. Amen. I will tell you, God's mercy and grace was sufficient for Felix, even with the wife he had, if he'd had determination to live for God. Amen. I was with Sheriff Barker when he went down Susie Curtis. Cows shall shied. She drove him underneath the railroad trestle to a field under, underneath on the other side of the railroad. Amen. She drove him right through Field Creek, the creek. And her cow shied away that morning. Felix Clark and Cleo Martin had took Felix fishing to get him away from the beer joints. And he got away from the campfire when they went to run the trot line. And they figured he'd gone back to town, but he didn't make it. Susie Curtis found him. He'd fell off that railroad trestle, off the end of it. Didn't kill him, but it addled him enough that he rolled over and rolled into the creek with his face down in four inches of water. Felix Clark drowned in four inches of water. I helped Sheriff Barker pull him out of the creek with his face down in the creek. I was his pastor. Well, I'll tell you, no matter how many failures there are, no matter how many missed destinies there are, no matter how many fail to find that day spring from on high, I lose sight of it. It's still real, and there's power to live for God to give the knowledge of salvation to His people by remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God whereby the day spring from on high have visited us. God's grace and mercy is sufficient tonight. 
Words of hope and power. In a day when all you can get is some more dirt over the radio. Some more bad news. Amen. And we've heard so much of it that we're sick and tired of it. What do we need? We need a kiss of God's divine mercy. And we're not worth it. Amen. And most of us have got a long way to go across the board I'm talking about. There's a good nucleus. There's a good nucleus of holiness, folks. Praise God around the country. Thank God for the 120 on the day of Pentecost. That 120 will fan the flame into 3,000 in a little while. That 120 will fan the flame into 5,000 in a little while. And pretty soon a fire break out and a great company of the priests will believe God and all Jerusalem is rocked back on its heels in the ebb and tide of a mighty Holy Ghost revival. A day of probation before final judgment. God give us one more touch of grace in time. One more kiss of mercy before the final day of judgment when men stand before God. And I hope that when it comes and we've had some mercy drops around here, folks. Amen. Mercy drops around us are falling. And the glory rolls around here quite often. But it ain't like that in most of the country. It ain't like that. Another new church going up. Another new church being built. Amazing thing is, they'll never have a revival as long as most of them stands. Why? They don't really want one. They want religion, but they don't really want that day spring from on high. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. That move of the Spirit that makes sinners uncomfortable. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and pray, Father. Touch our lives, Lord. And let mercy kiss the earth one more time. Lord, God, send us another John the Baptist move. Lord, God, give us another touch of mercy across the land. And I feel it, Lord, in the air. I feel it. Amen. It's already started. And I feel like many places in the earth, it's happening right now. And we've had, praise God, some good samples of it right here at the highway in the last year. Almighty move of God. Lord, I pray that you broaden our influence. Broaden the scope of our outreach. And Lord, us, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on all your people and abide. And let holiness and righteousness prevail. Mercy and truth kiss each other. Amen. Righteousness and peace embrace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mother Hasha. Thank you, Hashanah, Mahaya. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stand and let's come around God's altar and let the Holy Ghost come on our lives. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Let the Holy Ghost loose your mouth. Let the Holy Ghost loose your place. Mercy drops round us are full.